Hi everybody, I'm Michael. I'm a landscape architect and environmentalist and today we're at Native Tree Nursery to meet with the great folks here to go over native plants for your garden. Now they're wholesale, um, so just be aware that you're going to have to use a landscape contractor or go through them to get plants from these folks. But you're going to be able to see today some really cool plants that you can consider when designing your garden. So, you ready to dig in? Let's grow! All right, before we get started, I just want to do a little sidebar. I just love that there were electric vehicles out front. Today's video is going to focus on about a dozen or so hardy native trees and shrubs for your South Florida garden. This is part one of a two-part series. We reviewed so many uh, native plants that I decided to break it out into two more manageable video segments. I hope you enjoy it. Also, in the future, I will cover even more Florida natives, so please consider subscribing to our channel so you don't miss out. The folks here at Native Tree were so kind to allow uh, Ken, their container manager, to go around with us and talk about some of the plants and some of their characteristics and why they're so good for your South Florida garden. One thing I really like about Native Tree is that they have a lot of the plant material already installed around their office building so it's curated for you so you can see how the plants are growing at at their full size and and you get a good idea of their shape and that's a really cool thing to help folks understand what these trees ultimately will look like so we're going to go check out and discuss those natives and after that ken's going to take us in his golf cart and show us some additional native plants in their very large container nursery. Also, please check out the tail end of this video where we're going to show you each of these plants one by one. We'll provide you a video clip of each plant and we'll have some written care instructions to help you with your garden. So here's right out the gate and right outside the office that here at Native Tree they have a black ironwood, beautiful specimen. Wow, well shaped too. Wild coffee. Right next That's to it is wild coffee spice wood. and spice wood all growing together. And the beautiful cinnamon bark. Look at the color. This is oh yeah, they're going going to berry. Here we have an example of Florida boxwood. Good for coastal hammock, but even, even all through Miami-Dade County. Really nice, light green leaves. You've, you've shaped this over time. Is it, does it tend to want to go more horizontal or more upright? No, no, it, it, it's, uh, it naturally has a rounded shape. And we have pruned it, but you know, we can see where we would give it another Sure, place sure, you can see the growth so there. So naturally, it just grows like that. I've seen them growing in the forest, and they look like they've been pruned. Um, right. And so it's an ex excellent screening shrub because it never gets huge. You know? Yeah, wonderful. Kind of like what a lot of people be, are doing with the Clusia, yeah, uh, Gutefeta, they're using that. That gets a lot taller and it needs more trimming, and eventually you're going to end up with nothing but a mass of roots. Right. While this one here, yeah. uh, you prune it once every yeah, couple of years, and it'll do. It's wonderful. You can keep it at, it's like a good hole filler right up to six feet. Sure. And good for wildlife, it attracts the bees. You want to make the bees feel welcome in your yard. They're not going to come and sting you. Right, unless right. Unless you're slapping them or something. Right. <laughs> and the birds love the fruits. The fruits are little red things. They look like the cinnamon red hot. Candy. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, this is such a nice light green. I mean, I mean compared to the pigeon plum, which is like that dark, yeah. you know, that dark. That's a nice size pigeon plum yeah, that's too. Yeah, pigeon plum right there. That's right. Nice it's size. A good little combination. Yeah. This is a Jamaica a lot of fun. dogwood right here. Uh huh. So I'm gonna zoom back out here so you guys can see this Jamaican dogwood. That's a good. Good canopy tree, right, right. Yeah, but uh, the boxwood forms almost like you could have like a very loose like hedge uh, up to, you know, probably, well, this is probably max out at 15 feet. Yeah, maximum height. The, the biggest one you'll ever see would be like that. 
Right. And we think of it more in terms of screening rather than edges. Right, right. So we try to get away from the H word and into the screening more natural. Because there's less, there's less maintenance involved when you're doing that. Everybody, this is Ken speaking to my left here. Yeah. And um, he's providing wonderful insight for you all today. So thank you, Ken, for taking your time to help us design, out. design, concept, a little more natural. Right. And you space them out a little more and let them grow balanced rather than chopping them into an artificial shape. Sure, sure. So more like the woods. Uh-huh, exactly. Now between the Florida Keys, when people drive along US-1, the people are required to keep the, the front, I think it's 20 feet of their property as a buffer yard. And they, they let it grow natural. So when tourists drive to the Keys, they're not, they're not driving through all of these cliffs. Developments. And edges and lawns. They right. They're driving through the woods. Right, right. And as, so why, as why can't we do that more often around in our neighborhoods around here? And Absolutely. Like and it's... And it's and for a, for a resilient design, you know, part of native plants are so important on resilient design because they can they can handle droughts better than others. They can handle pests better than others, and uh, they 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 you know if you pick the right plant, right place, these guys if you let them grow, they can form a natural hedge where you don't have to sit there and spend all this energy to trim them as a formal hedge. Let them be these nice loose. Uh, plants and if this is too large for you to screen you could also look at smaller stuff like cocoa plum and others that could do that and let them still grow or even horizontal cocoa plum which yeah. is a Florida native get a very natural layer right without and it, it's like a mosaic kind of the way that the screening sure. comes together sure and you don't really have to trim anything great so well, right over here is a locust berry maybe there's a better angle. yeah we're gonna come around it's a little shrubby tree Love locust berry. We did a tree giveaway a little while ago, and people just and they were in bloom just what last month or a yeah, few they're, weeks they're ago. Oh, started, really. they haven't finished. Really. Well, there's there's some right there. I guess we got some early uh, bloomers. It was yeah, it was a few. No, it was a, maybe less than a month yeah, ago. Sporadically, they throw but, out a bloom or two, but the heavy time is coming up soon. And the butterflies, bees love this. Yeah, and it takes trimming very well, shaping. You don't but look at that shape just that way it's just a beautiful small ornamental tree great for like a courtyard i yeah, think and if you never do anything it'll get up to 20 feet tall it'll be like a big headed little tree with a thin trunk right uh, but yeah i mean just like this but taller uh-huh 20 feet 18 feet yeah so nice though you know they typically will be multi-trunk and you can limb up those lower pieces so that you could have clearance or put it in a raised planter in a courtyard. This is a beautiful, beautiful tree for a courtyard home or for uh, a place you would want to have your back patio. And boy, it does a good screen too though, Ken. Yeah. It's a nice a screen. screen. How, how old would you say this specimen is? All of this is probably 10 years. Nice. Great, well, let's go see some more. Here we have some crab wood. Beautiful. Yep. Nice round. Yep. And you can do it as a standard. You know, you have it kind yeah, of grown as a standard, but you can. Nice little tree. But, but you can also yeah. move it into a multi trunk if you want to. And this is an excellent one with uh, great salt tolerance, too. It takes the weight right. And then to the right of it is mulberry, yeah, right? Mulberry is a colander growing tree mm -hmm. up the pine land, understory pine land. Uh, so that makes it a good understory screening element. Let's say, for example, under an oak tree or other canopy tree. Sure, and sure. And it has uh, beautiful white flowers. There's some in the containers back there that I'll show oh, you. Great. That are flowering. And, they, and it, so it can be very showy right. when it's flowering. Right. Beautiful. Yeah, and it takes lower light conditions, shaded conditions. You can keep it, you know, let's say you just want to have like a six foot high hole to fill. Right. You just pop it in there. Right. And, and you don't see your neighbor anymore. Exactly, exactly. I mean, some people use the mass tree for these mega McMansions down there in Pinecrest and stuff, but yeah. the Marlberry would do the trick as well. And it's a Florida native. Yeah. You know, and you're going to have that that resiliency baked into the plant because it's adapted to growing down here. And they don't need any major, uh, that I'm aware of, of uh, 
extra care going in the ground you would we yeah. typically would recommend mixing just a native soil that's that you're putting in the in the ground sometimes they people do an improved soil but that goes back and forth over the years on what people like to add like an improved potting mix 50 mix with 50 percent of the soil you dug out of the ground because these plants have to get adapted to the soil they're growing in yeah. that's what i that was a premise i've always taken right, so i don't want to give them just a sweet spot where they just sit and grow in the hole and well, they don't try to here, move out the soil is very rocky yeah. And if you just drill a hole in the solid rock, it is good to amend with something organic right, right. to grow into. And sure. there's any number of choices. I don't think there's any one best one that doesn't. choice. Anything is good. Great. Okay. What else do we What other fun stuff can we look at? <laughs> well, we got our sea grape, which is a coastal native that... I've talked about it in some of my other videos, which is over here. This is, but you know, we can grow it pretty much anywhere in Miami Dade or the South Florida region. Gets these very popular. Yeah, very popular. Can get a little messy, you all. It gets these wonderful grape. They come out green and then they they turn this. I guess what was it? Wine red, purple sometimes. Yeah. And then they drop, and those are the fruits, and they can be a little messy. The, so in, like, the February, March, they change their leaves. Their leaves. This is like our fall, right? We yeah. get the fall fall change in, in right. the uh, the sea grape, um, and it's beautiful actually. But it does drop quite a bunch down below, and it's kind of like I see it all pretty much happening in, in a few weeks period of time, and then the new yeah, the new right. beautiful leaves come out. But they have this wonderful venation. If you look. Move on to here. Jamaican yeah, beautiful specimen. <clears throat> Jamaican caper, another Florida native. And this is a good beautiful shrub, ornamental shrub. Look at these beautiful the flowers, leaves. Uh, getting going. These flower buds yeah. as an interesting minor thing. You know the Italian capers? Uh-huh. When you sure. eat the Italian capers, that's what you're eating, the unopened flower buds. But these caper Unopened flower buds are not edible. Not edible. Otherwise, we would have people picking them in Canada. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like crazy. And then here's a view of the the trunk. Lichens included. Yeah, lichens included. <laughs> so this is a fairly old one that was a field-grown one. Here. Beautiful. God, the shape is just spectacular. You know, get one that big, it takes a long time. That's yeah. 20 years easily. Right. Beautiful, beautiful tree. Over here is a... Love your car. I got a Tesla, you got the Mach-E, I love it. I have a Tacoma. George has a Ford. Oh, nice. We don't care. pretentious <laughs> people. So now that we checked out the plants around the building, Ken's going to take us in his electric golf cart to go check out the nursery plants. <laughs> This is one of my favorites here. It's the black ironwood tree. Yeah, I planted them just a little while ago. Well, we planted three gallon. I wonder if we got them from you all or folks picked them up. So cool to see all these, you know, as you go in, you see the black ironwood next to each other. It's so cool, right? So cool. Jamaican caper in flower. Beautiful. Wow. I want to buy those two. And he has some more Jamaican capers over here. Some of these we're turning, we're limbing them up to turn them into little trees. Right. You know, in Key West, they they were planting some of them as street trees, which is uh, like an unbelievable thing to do. There's a mixture of Asian trees over right here. Uh huh. And another that's somewhat some, obscure. Here's some pigeon plums. plums. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. 
You can see some of the plums already forming. Yeah. And that's another one of Daisha's where it has male and female plums. And that's crab woods right here. Mm -hmm. Right here Beautiful are white crabwood. stoppers. Yeah, white stoppers has a real funky smell to them. Stand yeah, out. it's it's very very strong. You can smell it, huh? Yeah, many people. Have your think, YouTube scratch and sniff. Yeah, if you have a scratch and sniff, and people are gonna want to smoke it because it definitely <laughs> smells like marijuana to well, me. They, yeah. They don't need to smoke it if they just smell it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the birds love the fruits too. Yeah, I this is the characteristic I normally see of the whites. It's like they don't like the Simpson has this beautiful shape and form to it wow you really can smell y'all you can smell the white stopper from afar very if you either you'll either love it or hate it it's one of those very strong very strong scent coming off of the the, the, the small tree but it it you know it's got a, like a spanish spanish stopper height columnar field for me ken but yeah, but i but um it, it's not as is um its form tends to be a little more loose uh less less well-rounded, I guess. I'm looking for a columnar, but but yeah. maybe that's just, you know, no, some of these that, guys. That describes it well. But very nice. Another Florida native. Great for great for your South Florida garden. Yeah. Yeah. Here we have spice wood. Here's crab wood in a three gallon. Beautiful. You can see that, that new growth. It's reddish, beautiful. Yeah, that's they're so popular. Florida native, Kunti, Samuel Floridana loves butterfly. The Atala butterfly. This is its host plant, so it's very very helpful for pollinators. And you don't have to trim it, right? Low maintenance. You just let it grow and do its thing. What's the the largest one you've ever seen, Ken? Uh, well, in let's say like uh, six feet tall, Whoa! Feet wow, not me. I haven't been that lucky. I normally see them will be about three and three and a half tops. They have the ones, some of ours that I've seen planted around Miami Dade will have, uh, they got the scale yeah. uh, every now and then. And they never, I never noticed that before, but I don't know why. I don't know if it's a low bait lack scale that's hitting it or just a regular uh, no. black scale. Yeah, it's not the low bait lack scale. Oh yeah, more Kuntis, three this gallon. Three gallon size, ready to right. sell. Ready to go. We sell these. This my, I'm a super huge fan. This is one of my favorite, favorite native shrubs. But then again, I, I've got so many favorites. It's, you know, it's just, you know, it depends on the day, the week. You know, I mean, if you look at a small locust berry, I'm like, I think that's my favorite. And then I see a kunti and I, and I toggle back, but that locust berry is just, it's, I don't know, it's, it's moving up there on, on my uh, scale of plants I really dig. So that's here, great. Here are locust berries here. Oh yes, beautiful. Look at that, they need a little more time before yeah. they're ready. But I mean, when they're flowering like this, this is just crazy all. Look how beautiful locust berry in full flower major pollinator attractor and it's wonderful for the native i don't i mean these are i would see is you know definitely growing under canopies of other trees or on the periphery of others as a hammock plant yeah that, that's right they would layer themselves in too oh wonderful specimens great white indigo berry see the flower Seven gallon. Do you are you able to keep them in stock or they they go fast? Yeah, they go fast. Uh, um, I, these would already be sold, but I didn't I don't I didn't want to sell them because I wanted to keep them for stock plants. Sure. Because if, if we lose, you know, if we yeah. don't pay attention to the seeds or get cuttings, then we could end up selling them all, and we'd never have any. So this one does it readily take from cutting like a graft? Yeah, yeah, or? yeah he's beautiful. And see the flowers. This is in the same family, the Rubiaceae. It's the same family as gardenias. Uh, so these are very fragrant. You oh, you! Right. I'm a sucker. You can use your uh, 
mm. the YouTube Smith oh, yes. application. <laughs> uh, yes, this is a, coming soon. <laughs> you know, what we, uh, you know, what we can do for in the way of gardenias that are native to South Florida. This is considered to, could be considered to be a lot close. Yeah, as, I like I said earlier, gardenia version. scent is one, one of, is one of one of my faves. Can you smell it? Oh, I did. Yeah, it's great. I'm going to go Sea grapes. These are more wild cinnamons here. Beautiful wild cinnamon. That's a big seller Berger. for us. We uh, uh -huh. could kind of have a lot in every size, but nothing quite ready. So in the shade house here, we have a variety of uh, definitely carrots, sea palms. Looks like some lady palms too. Yeah, lady palms and lapala. Oh, you got lapala grandis. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Lapala hippo dulata. A couple other lapala. And this is bridal bridal veil. I'm looking back yeah, over here. Bridal veil over there. Nice. We have some of the sumawangi and spinosa. Yeah, the spinosa I always found on the the quality to be a little more robust grower. The, the yeah. grandest for me was harder to grow. Oh, there's the grandest. Oh, yeah, nice. we have some beauties. On the inside there, yeah, very nice. higher prices too. About what you get for what we have. Could I take a quick video of that? Yeah, sure. Here's some of their Laquala grandest, and I'm a sucker for these palms. Look at these Laquala grandest. Aren't they spectacular? Wow. Well, they love, they're loving it, Ken. Wow, just beautiful. Beautiful fan-shaped leaves. Okay, now we're going to show you each of the plants individually with more detailed information on how to grow and care for them.
that was a great tour here at Native Tree Nursery. And I want to thank Ken and David and the whole team here. Again, this is wholesale only. But if you all have any questions, please just leave them in the comment box below and I'll make sure I get back to you. Again, thanks so much, Ken. It was super helpful thank to you. have you along for this. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. If you found value in this video, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. We post weekly. Thanks. The Marlberry. Beautiful red stoppers. Yeah. So red stoppers are extremely slow growing. Uh, we Robinson, have seen yes. robot is there. Yeah, the, the, the handheld is not <laughs> helping me with filming. <laughs>